Okay, so uh, on our final part of this video, we've already set up uh, the inverter. This is a 2500 12 volt inverter. We used uh, two watt cabling. I did install a um, this, uh, this circuit breaker. This is a 250 amp circuit breaker uh, due to the 2000 watt uh, 12 volt system. It's required that you have something as close to the, a little bit over the volt of the amperage that you're gonna be needing. So uh, I did scale it up. I have two out wire cabling for here to the bus bar. Of course, the battery is feeding to the bus bar. So all I have to do is get it to the bus bar. So I have a, a, the switch between here and the bus bar so that we can isolate anything that happens here. We have our, as you can see from earlier, we have our charge controller. We've got our Voltaic DC switch or our switch to turn off the panel should we need to. And of course we have our breaker between the, the uh, charge controller and our battery. And it's going to go ahead and we'll fire this up and then we're gonna run some appliances and see how well they run. So the first thing you want to do is make sure the battery goes to the charge controller. So we just get that going. We should see it start up. Very good. Okay, we've got battery. Now we're going to be turning on our panels. So the panel is the second thing we're going to be sure turning on so that we can have that power flowing in as we charge our batteries. And as the battery, then we'll, we'll get the battery to start for the inverter. That way the inverter is gonna do all the heavy lifting as far as getting the DC back to AC so we can run some appliances, which I'll be plugging in and we'll be testing that out. All right, so far we got our panels going in. It's in bulk charge right now. Panels are on, circuits are on. Now I'm gonna turn this on first before I even power it on the inverter. That just enables the battery now to have power going to the inverter. And the inverter has its own switch it's got its own fuses, so if there's a problem, uh, if this fails, this will also have its fuses and it'll shut off. All right, we're gonna fire it up. See this, but it is running at 122 uh, volts AC that's coming out of the sockets and on this uh, block that we have here. The other meter reading is that it's at 14.3, which is good because that is the maximum uh, charge hold for this uh, 12 volt battery that we have. It's an AGM battery. So let's go ahead and plug in some things and see how well it works. Plug into here, get it on. There we go. And we got a fan running. Great. Now we also have a, a big series of lights that we could use. Uh, this is great for a system if you need to have uh, some sort of a, a light system, such as this. If you're working outdoors or in a remote area, you have this attached to a board or some similar type of arrangement, you can also attach some lights and some lights here. Now at this point, we only have the two sockets that we're going to be using. This draws very little wattage. That will draw about low, I'd say about 400 watts or so. Let's go ahead and get that in. There we go. Get some lights on. We got some light power. There we go. So now we got some lights going. We got a fan going, and that's just out of these two uh, sockets that are on the inverter itself. 
Now, if we wanted to, we could also wire in a, um, a power strip and mount it up here, so the, or down here, wherever was most convenient. So we can use the full 2,500 watts out of this one block. The two sockets here will divide the 2,500 watts because it's not capable of running all 2,500 through one socket itself. So we have dual socket. It's just going to split that up between appliances. So at this point, we are still running at a 14.3 uh, voltage coming in, and we still have 122 volts AC. Still running out of this, more than enough to run a simple fan and some uh, LED lights, uh, work lights that we have here. I'll be attaching a heat gun, which draws quite a bit of amperage, and we'll leave the lights on since it draws more than this fan, and we'll see how well it holds up. Okay, we have our heat gun attached. Uh, this heat gun uh, can go up to about uh, 1200 watts. And since we still have our lights going, which are about, uh, oh, I would say about 300 watts or so, 300, 400 watts of LED, pretty conservative. Uh, I'm gonna put some heavier ones on there and see how far this will go and see how much uh, we're gonna be using up. At this point, we're still drawing pretty good from our, from our panels to our charge controller. It's in absorption mode right now, which means it's gonna be uh, loading up for the, uh, of battery so that when we start drawing power, it'll be able to comfortably keep the battery topped off. Okay, so at this point we have it on a low setting. I would say that would be about uh, 700, 800 watts is running out of this thing. It's pretty close. It's, it's gonna go up to 1201, I put it on high. Uh, we're still getting about 11.5 uh, volts. Uh, a, a DC is now traveling to the inverter. Now at this point, the heat gun is now running at full capacity at 1200 watts. And uh, according to our inverter on the side here, we have only, uh, have 11 volts DC going to it. So this is drawing that much from the battery as we are going. Uh, it's uh, at 111 volts AC is now currently displacing out of the inverter. That means that though it's consuming quite a bit of uh, amperage. As it settled down, we're going to about 10.8. It's floating around between 11 to 10.8 volts DC from battery all into the inverter. At this point, this inverter is now going to be putting out about 110 to 111 uh, volts AC. That's more than enough to run this heat, uh, this heat gun at full capacity and our LED lights. We have two LED lights running at this point, so that's about I would say it's close to around uh, 500 to 400 watts of LED. So as you can see, you can run pretty much a lot from this, just this little unit here. Uh, if you had a refrigerator or something of that nature, you'd be able to run as uh, devices such as that. It makes it great for a remote or a small cabin. If you want to run like a small um, uh, window AC unit, this would be more than capable of handling that. And if there's uh, anything else that you need to uh, put onto this thing, you can always upsize this. You can always upsize the battery bank and your inverter. This particular charge controller can go, as I said, up to 150 volts at 100 amps. So this can handle quite a bit bigger load than what we're looking at right here. You can also increase your, uh, your panels just as if you want to. Just remember to stay within the parameters of your switches and fuses. You don't want to overrate them. You don't want to go over those that these are capable of handling. You want to stay well within it. But this little system is great for handling lots of stuff. Uh, small small um, RVs can, can run it, small cabins, and, and remote little <laughs> setups if you want to boot something like this. Otherwise, this is what we got for today. Um, hope you enjoyed this video, and we hope to see you soon. If you have any questions, just give us a holler at www.santansolar.com. I'm Dave with the tech department, and we'll be glad to be hearing from you soon.